Hey, hey, any youth leaders out there? Serving with youth in the church is probably one of the most enjoyable callings, but it brings with it a lot of responsibility. How do we effectively lead this rising generation? Well, I have good news for you. Leading Saints has organized the Young Saints Virtual Library, where we have 20 plus hours of presentations all about how to lead youth. We cover topics like how to help youth transition into adulthood, how to help them avoid loneliness, how to handle smartphones in class, and we even go over scientific data about how Latter-day Saint youth differ from other youth. If you'd like to review the Young Saints Library at no cost for 14 days, simply go to leadingsaints.org 14. That's leadingsaints.org 14. While you're at it, we'll give you access to all of our virtual libraries that cover several leadership related topics. So click the link in the show notes or simply visit leadingsaints.org slash one four. So my name is Kurt Frankum, and I am the founder and executive director of Leading Saints and obviously the host of the Leading Saints podcast. Now, I started Leading Saints back in 2010. It was just a hobby blog, and it grew from there. By the time uh, 2014 came around, we started the podcast, and that's really when it got some uh, traction and took off. Uh, 2016, we became a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and we've been growing ever since. And now I get the opportunity of an of interviewing and talking with remarkable people all over the world. Now, this is a segment we do on the Leading Saints podcast called How I Lead. And we reach out to everyday leaders. They're not experts, gurus, authors, PhDs. They're just everyday leaders who've been asked to serve in a specific leadership calling. And we simply ask them, how is it that you lead? And they go through some remarkable principles that should be in a book, that should be behind a PhD. They're, uh, they're usually that good. And uh, we just talk about uh, sharing what the other guy's doing. And I remember being a leader, just simply wanting to know, okay, I know what I'm trying to do, but what's the other guy doing? What's working for him? And so that's why every Wednesday or so, we publish these How I Lead segments to share. Today, I'm in Green Bay, Wisconsin, with Vivian Bishop Cook. How are you, Vivian? I'm great. You go by Viv, right? I do. And you're yeah. the first female bishop that we've had on the podcast. Yes. Is, <laughs> is that your maiden name? Or? It is. Nice. Yep. Yep. And then you married a cook. I did. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And he's a good one. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. You'll keep him? Yeah. You're awesome. Forever? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> That's the deal, right? <laughs> nice. And where are you originally from? I'm from Dallas, Texas. Nice. Yep. You kind of have that, that Texas. I do. I've been up here 25 years, though. You can't and shake it, huh? I have. Yeah, my husband says I speak Texconson. Oh, yeah? Oh, boy. I, that's dangerous. <laughs> we need to, uh, to translate this one later on, right? No. Um, and uh, so what brought you up to Wisconsin? So my ex-husband and a job, um, and then I stayed. Yeah. So yeah, a good place to live. It is great to raise kids here. The weathers are, ter- you know, the weather and winters are terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, it's good. Yeah, it's really cold. <laughs> it's very cold. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and you're uh, also a therapist. I am. So how long have you been doing that? I have been doing that about eight years. Um, I have a private practice and see about ninety five percent of members from our faith mm-hmm. and um and I love it. Nice. Yeah. Are there that many like Latter-day Saint therapists to refer to in this area? There's or? not. You're There's the only it? two of us. Oh, two of you, okay. <laughs> and we live about two hours apart and she's amazing. And yeah. so often we'll refer to each other. Um she does a lot of Keppel's therapy. Um and I do as well. And then I, you know, have a specialty with addictions. And so I work with a lot of people with pornography addictions. And so we just refer back and forth to each other often. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we have a great relationship between she and I. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's good to hear like the bishops and whatnot have yeah. Latter-day Saint therapists to refer to. I'm sure other therapists are still helpful and Absolutely. useful, but to yeah. just have that foundation as yeah. they walk in is is awesome. Right? Yeah. So I always love to ask with therapists, 
like what what are you seeing right now? I mean, you deal with a lot of pornography yeah. struggles and whatnot. What uh, anything specific that uh, I'm not, I'm always intrigued by a therapist perspective is what yeah. what's going on in, in the mind of of Latter Day Saints. Yeah, I think for the adult population, um, I, I really see a lot of people that have self esteem issues and are trying to work on balance mm -hmm. in their lives, and so they're trying to balance you know the myriad of things that they have going on. Um, you know, it's like the spinning plates type you know, yeah. metaphor. And, and so oftentimes there's, you know, a few of those plates that keep falling off or they can't put on, um, you know, lots of people have, I, I think everything's a relationship. So a lot of people have relationship issues, whether it's, you know, with themselves, with, you know, family members, with their spouse, you know, with God. And so we work, I mean, I pretty much work in the relationship field. Yeah. Um, and, and I think with, with our youth, I typically don't see children. So anyone teenage and above is who I see and teenagers. Ugh, yeah, it's a struggle. It's a struggle with COVID, um, and a lot of anxiety and social issues, um, that are really popping up right now. Depression, you know, has always been on the forefront. Um, and so I, yeah, I work with kids a lot on how they can manage themselves in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just that I'm in <clears throat> I guess be, living in the modern age with a lot of demands and then, you know, with, with church on top of that and the responsibilities, the yeah. expectations, right. And falling short and feeling like you shouldn't fall short and then it piles up and, yeah, and people really struggle. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And you know, there's a, a marginalization, you know, of our population too. And so I see a lot of people, um, not as many, but I see a lot of people who are, you know, of the LGBTQ plus, you mm -hmm. know, community and, um, and a lot of them are trying to figure out what to do with, with their, their faith. <laughs> what yeah. do you do with that? What do you do, you know, with, with your membership within our church, how are you balancing all of that? So I think balance is always the, the big buzzword, you know, for my practice and for who I see and how we can better balance things better, you know, whether it's our mental health, you know, our chemical health, our, you know, social, the relationships that we have, how we incorporate all that in our faith. Um, and, and there's, you know, we're never not busy. Yeah. yeah that's so true. <laughs> yeah. So true. And then you have, ha you have a vast amount of experience with girls camp. Is that right? And I that's, do. You just were, <laughs> were born in this world with a few purposes. And one of those was to go to a lot of girls camps. Yes. Is that right? Nice. <laughs> And do you enjoy it? I love camp. Yeah. I loved camp before I knew what, what young women camp was. Uh -huh. I have older sisters and they had incredible experiences. They taught me songs. I was looking forward to it. And I had really, really great um, camp experiences that led me to love it. I had incredible leaders who I still message almost every year after camp, thanking them oh, yeah. <laughs> for all the work. <laughs> Cause as a youth, I had no idea, you know, how much work was going to be put into this. And, and so I messaged them. I had, I just had leaders who, who knew me and, and who knew what was going to be very important for me. And even to the point I had a leader that would schedule some rebellion time, because uh, some of us were just born with a rebellious nature <laughs> And, um, or developed into that somehow. And so it was just incredible how, how they knew us and how they knew those specific needs, even outside of what a manual says, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. So rebellion time. Yeah. How did that work? Hear, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is this so, something you do? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So how did no that work? way. <laughs> I am the one that's doing a little off course something sometimes. It's not never bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like one year, um, we were YCLs and and I I knew our leader knew that we were all on the fringe. You know, most of us were on the fringe at that point. And myself, you know, I'd end up leaving the church not that much, you know, after that for a bit. And um and I she just knew she had to do something to rein us in. And otherwise we were going to go maybe, you know, do some really, really be nothing but rebellion. Naughty type, things. Right? <laughs> I know just <laughs> naughty. Right. If we're left to our own devices. And so, um, she secretly let us go to town with her. Um, and we got ice cream. I know it's not like <laughs> you weren't spray painting Mormon rebellion, yeah, ah, right. <laughs> the ice cream. Um, but it was, uh, 
It's what we needed. We needed an outlet to do something that helped us feel special, helped Mm -hmm. us feel like we were doing something against the rules, so to say. Mm -hmm. And we were with a leader (laughs) going to get ice cream, you know, and um, that was just something that was just really special. Like, yeah. yeah. And it reined us in. It really did. Yeah. yeah. Thankfully, uh, I have learned from some of that. (laughs) But the camp that we go to is so far from oh, anything. Oh, really? Yeah, you're <laughs> there, out there. It would, be, yeah, it would take. Yeah, people would notice someone's gone. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> nice, nice. To run to the little Dairy Queen in town, but um, yeah, but yeah, no, I just had a I had special leaders who who knew us and and knew the nuances of what we needed. And like I said, outside of a manual, they hit all the manual points. If that makes sense, but. Um, yeah, just uh, and that that just has developed into a love of camp as an adult. Yeah. yeah. So uh, how, uh, how many camps have you done? I mean, yeah, what would you I mean, estimate? I was trying to think about it. Yeah. So in my adult life, um, I think I did five as a youth. And then in my adult life, um, I think about 15 or 16. Wow. Great. Yeah. And you're going to you did one this past summer. Yes. Nice. Yes. Maybe next summer. I, they always have me coming back. <laughs> okay. And is it typically, are you like in a young women's presidency or yeah. the camp director? Or yeah. You done both yep. Or? So I've been, you know, ward camp director. I've been um, in the stake young women's presidency, helping plan camp. Um, I've been, uh, and then most recently as a stake camp director and, um, and, and in our stake, we only do stake camp. Mm-hmm. And so that was interesting during COVID, um, those two years that yeah. we had to do some different things. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. And then, you know, outside of that, if I didn't have a young woman call in that calling, there we got a little Texas twang <laughs> coming out. <Love> um, <laughs> if I didn't have one, then I would always volunteer to do something like at the, the service project. I've done those for a few years, workshops, you know, come as a speaker, like those types of things. Yeah. yeah. So let's jump into some principles here. Like yeah. if you're talking to a first year <clears throat> camp director or even the young women's presidency stake or ward, like what are some, what, what principle should we start on as far as always keep this in mind? Yeah. So I call it the three ring circus uh-huh. is what we run. <laughs> and it. you know, often like a circus, you just have a lot of acts going on at the same time because you need to appease all the different interests. And so I call it the re- the three ring circus and the three rings um, are faith, friendship, and fun. Mm. And I always add in faith. I think that's, you know, our girls, they would love us to run a fun camp only, yeah, <laughs> a fun and friendship camp. Um, but we're not the YMCA. We're not the Salvation Army. We're not Camp Unalaya here. Like we, we need to run a faith-based camp. And, um, and so that is a guaranteed aspect of, of our, of our camps that we do. So that's like the overarching, like, these are the three pillars that we're going to yes. make sure are present and obvious at some, at one point or another, you're doing one of these three things. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. And oftentimes we're doing all three at the same time, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, something might be a little bit more spiritual. Something might be a little bit more friend based. Um, and then we've developed just through amazing inspiration, you know, from personal inspiration, from presidency inspiration, from, you know, the, the camp guideline that was, you know, brilliantly put out years ago. I'm such a fan of the new way of doing camp, such a fan. Mm -hmm. Everyone is, I don't know a person that wants us to do certification. Yeah. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Talk about fun, right? Talk about fun, (laughs) (laughs) but it makes so much sense, especially with a global church. Um, it makes so much sense to do a camp that is so geared towards your girls. Mm -hmm. And we are very young women forward. Yeah. So much so that I have to think about the leaders at some point, you know, like, oh yeah, we do need to take care of this and we need to do this. And in our stake, we have, um, it's hard to keep using the word amazing all the time because you want to use something else. (laughs) Um, but they truly are amazing. We have the best leaders. We have the best cook. Um, we, I always tell her, are we doing this again this year? Cause if she doesn't come, I'm not coming. You feed people. They're happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have amazing priesthood leaders that come. Um, so yeah, it's, nice. uh, 
we we're very blessed in this area. Nice. Anything else with this faith, faith friendship yeah. and fun? I mean, these are words. I mean, are they in a, a manual somewhere? Or did you come they're up not. with these words? Okay. Yeah, they're principles. They're based out of this, you know, out of the manual, but we've kind of taken that to a different level, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and really geared a lot of our stuff, but they are definitely our principles within, you know, the, the camp, um, guidelines. Yeah. And, and how do they, um, show up as you're in the planning phase? Are you always coming back to these or how does that look in application? We do. So one of the things that we have morphed into is what the church wants us to do, which is have our YCLs lead. You know, they're called our youth camp leaders. And, but one of those principles I learned a long, long, long time ago as a leader is we have to mentor and coach them. You know, that is also, you know, in my, in my practice and in my family, um, we have eight kids, you know, and six grandbabies. Like, wow. so in, in our families, like the, the parenting style that is most recommended today with all the information that we've gleaned all over the years is coaching where you coach your kid and how you do that is you set up the guidelines for them, right? You set up the criteria, you let them go for a little bit and practice this, right? And then you come back and you work on those skills with them. I've done this with activity days. I've done this with young women, activity day girls. One of them was a leader for all of our activities. Um, and we mentored them. It's not the easy way Mm -hmm. as anyone who's ever worked with youth knows it is not the easier way, but it's the better way. Yeah. It's not easy to get teenagers to respond 25. We had 25 YCLs this year Wow. to respond. And that's only out of 65 girls total. We had Uh a ton that came back, which I'm so happy. Um, it says a lot about our camp and says a lot about, um, the leaders and the structure, um, and how involved they wanted to be. And we, um, we do something a little bit different than what the church um, recommends, which is we actually allow anyone 16 to 18 years old because of the proximity of our stake. We span two States, two time zones, (laughs) um, is huge area. We allow um, all of our our young women in that age range to be YCLs. Okay, so in a typical stake, they would just they handle call like them. a calling, right? Yes. So exactly. anybody in that, if you want to come to camp, yeah, we'll find something the, for you. We to... will find something for you to do. Wow. Now, of course, we have those girls who are more experienced and more talented in leadership, and so they've taken that role. One of the things that we do a little bit differently in our stake too is we call a YCL director, and so she is actually over all the YCLs as well. Hmm you know, with, with me or the, you know, the camp director. Um, and so we had, um, and we, we do that by inspiration. We call her, she's not set apart. It's just an assignment. Um, and we have (laughs) had an amazing, an amazing, um, experience with that. And so I work with her on specific things. Um, one of those is that, um, and just so you know, for our YCLs, because we're so spread out in our stake, um, we, we end up doing a lot of virtual meetings. And mm-hmm. so we set those up on Sundays, um, in between like, you know, when church is done, dinner is done. And then like the evening starts, you know, cause all of our YCLs in that age range are always so busy. And so we do a lot of virtual meetings, um, and have them bring things. We split up into committees and have each of those girls who are over committees. Um, and you know, we, we do the aspects of camp like crafts and, you know, the workshops and, Um, and we do like the service project and we do the fun, (laughs) we just call it like activities, you know, the fun activities. And, and so each of the girls can find an interest. They find something they buy in, which is huge, getting their buy-in and then they plan them. And we mentor them as a stake and women's presidency, you know, the camp leadership, we're mentoring them. We have each one of, of those leaders who's over one of, you know, who's the leader over one of these, um, subcommittees or committees. And, um, it's just great. It's, uh, the girls are amazing in those because they're smaller groups. <laughs> yeah. They get our shyer girls can have more of a voice. Um, and, and they're, uh, they just do, it, it just seems to work. Yeah. It just works. So one little de- <clears throat> detail I'm curious yeah. about, like with the opening up to any, um, 16, 18 yeah. year old girl that wants to be a white on the, the, be a YCL. How do you communicate that? Do you make an announcement? Do you just let them know that the previous camp, if they want to come back or how does that, how does that work? So it's that a standard in our, in our state because we only do state camp. Um, mm-hmm. it's a standard. Okay. And so, so we've always known. had that. Yeah. yeah. And we do have girls who are on the spectrum. We have special, you know, special mm-hmm. needs girls and we just find something for them to do. 
sometimes, you know, we have really, really shy girls. Probably the majority are shyer. Sure. Um, <laughs> and and so they get to stand in the back, um, but they're still a part of the leadership. Um, and I will always always believe and promote that our YCLs, they're the heart of camp. Mm -hmm. They are, they're the heart. Everyone else is the structure participants, you know, the, the managers, you know, the chaos coordinator, um, <laughs> they, they are the heart of camp and they're the ones that the younger girls look up to. They're the ones who have to be a hundred percent on task on example. And so we really instill that with them from the beginning and we have had so much success. We've had young women who um, have really grown, <laughs> have grown at a week of camp, not even a week, <laughs> mm -hmm. like have been able to grow and develop in themselves who feel a part of something bigger than them, who feel like they're contributing. And, um, and sometimes they don't have that in their usual lives, you know, yeah. in their normal lives. Yeah. yeah. Talk me through uh, as far as mentoring, like yeah. any specific examples come to mind of, of sure. what that looks like and and how do you actually go about mentoring these yes. girls? Yes, I know. It's the secret sauce here. Yes. So listen up, man. All right. Um, <laughs> so one of the things we, we've we really switched over and, and, and I'll tell you, like I said, it's not the easier way to have YCLs lead. It's not the easier way to have them do our workshops. It's not the easier way to have them, you know, the, the method, especially for my generation above is to burn yourself out. Mm. You do it, you do it amazing. And then you end up in your office. <laughs> and then you end up in my office as a client, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, you end up burnt out yeah. and no one else has learned your secret sauce. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. If no one else has the opportunity, they won't develop. And the reason why we became all of us in my generation and like me became amazing is because we had so much practice and we had great mentors. So one of, I'll give you an example. So we have them do a devotional. We don't have our leaders do them very often. We might have our, a special one come in, you know, I've come into some of them um, and done that, but we'll have them do a devotional. And we, as part of one of our spiritual rings of our circus, we actually shut camp down. This is something I'm so proud of. We shut camp down um, for 45 minutes and have an individual spiritual time. Mm. It is, <laughs> it's been so popular that our young men's camp has now adopted that. Oh, awesome. It is many of our girls' favorite part of camp, which you imagine, like there's other rings of the circus, right? And this one is so amazing. So we have one of our YCLs do um, a devotional right before that. Five minutes, maybe. You go 10 or 20 or 30, we lose them. Um, and so they do a five to 10 um, minute devotional. So I don't pick the topic. I allow them to pick the topic because I want them to go through that inspiration mode. You know, what is that? What is that like? Sometimes we do that in talks or, you know, or, or speaking engagements that we do. We're not given a topic. And so I allow them that opportunity to go off inspiration, to come back to me and say, this is what I'm thinking about doing sister cook. And, um, and then I walk them through, tell me what are, what are the points that you're trying to make? Where are you going to go with, um, with experience? If you add an experience with this, you're going to get so many more people involved, you know, what you have to say. And, um, and so we do that and we go through that. Um, I give them a couple of weeks to do that. And then we set up another time to meet back. Um, and then they just run me through it. Okay. So when you say you, for these, this 45 minute inspiration time, this is during girls camp, <laughs> during camp okay, every day, every day in the evening, it's in the morning, in the morning. Okay. Yeah. One of the first things you do or no, cause okay. <laughs> <laughs> they'll never do it. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. All right. So it's, uh, it's mid morning. Um, and so we have our flag ceremony, you know, after breakfast, after cleanup, you know, ever, everybody's ready for the day, you know, and then we come, we do, um, we come back into our lodge and then our YCL does a devotional. Okay. And then we, and then we go right into gotcha. individual spiritual time. And so we have a whole spiritual table of things that girls can take with them if they want. We have hymnals, we have preach my gospel, you know, we have, um, scriptures, we have all these different things. They also, we allow them to use their phone, mm -hmm. um, in moderation. And so they can use their phone for things like come follow me. And they're not getting the signal anyway. <laughs> so 
they're just going to use our the signal screen. is really bad. So yeah. they have to have it already loaded on their phone, thankfully. Yeah. Um, and, and so they go and, and we, it's the quietest time. Our leaders get to do it as well. And it is incredible. And are there any like specific rules? Like you can't talk or anything? Yeah, like we that? ask them not to share with each other um, unless it is something that makes sense. You know, like we had a leader that, you know, took a, a non member girl aside mm. and walked through some different things and questions that she had. Um, but our girls, they they want that time. Yeah. We used to do 30 minutes, and that was our number one requested time. The first year we started was to make it longer. Wow. What? Not better yeah. food, not more fun. It was like the number one request was, can you make spiritual time longer? Wow. So now you said about 45 minutes. Yeah. If okay. we do an hour, it's too long. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Can I share one quick experience? Yeah. So we had a girl who, um, super active family, you know, her dad's branch president, like really, you know, very faithful members. And she was an older YCL. We call them super YCLs once they've served as a YCL. Right. And then they get a cape and a mask. It's amazing. Like literally? We theme the, okay. you know, we right. theme the crap out of everything <laughs> at camp. Are you kidding me? It's amazing. And so um, she was a super YCL and she was thinking about going on a mission. And so she decided to um, take one of the preach my gospel manuals that, you know, books that we had over there. And this was the first time, Kurt, that she had opened up a Preach My Gospel. Hmm. Super active family, very faithful, something that would be a little surprising for some of us. Um, but it was the first time. And she knew she had a really cool experience for her testimony about it um, during testimony meeting that she she knew that this was um, what she needed to do. And she served a mission. And, um, and it was cool to have been able to um, to really present that experience or opportunity for oh, someone. Yeah. Yeah. And so you, you mentioned they, they do this and then the, there's a mentorship component to it. Like they may meet with you or something. Or? So when I do, well, yeah, if they do the devotional, um, any of our oh, okay. YCLs, yeah, I'm always doing the, you know, if, if they're just doing the devotional, which is, it's just a talk, um, right. a short talk, um, that, that they, um, I'll meet with them throughout, you know, um, our preparation for camp Gotcha. Okay. and then right before camp. Um, and so they're, but they're going through this process of thinking you you don't come to them and say, oh, we'd like you to talk on this topic. No. They, the hope is that they're sort of wrestling with this opportunity so that they come up with their own inspiration yeah. and what they're going to address during the devotional right before yes. the spiritual time. Yeah. Right. Wow. One time we had a, um, one of our YCLs who was like, I think I need to change this. And this was the day before she was giving it at camp. And I knew she was prepared. You know, I, you know, had mentored her and knew that what she was talking about was amazing. She told me the topic that she wanted to talk about. And it was like, ding, ding. We both just felt it that she needed to do that one. And, um, so that's even cool yeah. Yeah. to go through, but the, my, my favorite part is not even the mentoring. My favorite part is the incidental learning. So when I meet with them, we're not just talking about devotional, right? I'm getting to really know what's going on in her life. I'm getting to know, you know, where her struggles are, where her testimony is. I'm really getting to know all these different things. And she's getting to know me and feeling another layer of love and care and concern in her life. And so it's, it's not just that we're talking about this devotional. That's probably the least amount of, you know, success that's happening within, mm -hmm. you know, within that time frame. Um, but it's really that we get to talk about recognizing the spirit. We get to talk about recognizing inspiration. We had to talk about how do you think about these girls, you know, who you're delivering this message to. It's not only the delivery, it's who's, you know, the recipient, and we get to talk about, you know, the struggles in her life. I probably bring that a little extra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just having the, you know, therapy backgrounds and counseling backgrounds. Yeah. Um, so that part is my favorite where we're sitting by the water and we're talking about the struggles in her family. And then we also, you know, get to talk about how she's been inspired to give, you know, to talk about the women of, of you know, in the scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. And you, um, and along with your background, like bringing that vulnerability and struggle to the surface, like in these devotionals and whatnot, like, is that, is that the hope or? Oh, I'm always a proponent yeah. of that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why, why are you delivering this? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Why does the Lord want you? What do you bring that is really special to this? Yeah. And tapping into that. Um, and then really coaching them too on, on where to be vulnerable and where to, where oversharing is, you know? Yeah. And th- we've always struggled with that with testimony meetings in our stake. And so one of the other principles that, that we really, really work on, um, is how, what a testimony is. Hmm. And so we start day one, um, because the idea is, you know, it's, it's not an open mic night. It's not group therapy, um, which some of our testimonies, it's not a a testimony about your friend making you get up there, um, Mm -hmm. and bear a testimony. So, because there's a testimony meeting near the end of camp, I assume, right? So you are sort of preparing for that. It's just not something you throw in there. We don't. Yeah. Okay. We really prepare them. We encourage them to, you know, to to know what, what the five points of a testimony are, mm-hmm. you know, we encourage them to, um, to bear testimony about a principle of the gospel, a spiritual experience. And we, that's what we provide all week mm. Yeah. <laughs> so that someone brand new, we have lots and lots of non-members who come. We have lots of girls who are at, you know, inactive, less active. Um, and so we have to provide those opportunities because they don't have them typically in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It's great. What other component or dynamic yeah. do you do you have going on? This is interesting. So one of the other rings of our of our camp, you know, is friendship. And that is really important to me. Um, I some of our girls, they live in really low socioeconomic, you know, areas of our stake. Um, a lot of them go to school with, you know, such a few amount of people on a thousand kids in my freshman class, you know, and, and they have 10, 15, maybe 40 in their school, you know, and you're like, wow, your, your area of opportunity is so small for friendship. And so it was really important to me and just weighing on my heart and mind that each of our girls would go home with a friend from Hmm. camp. And because we only meet, you know, once, especially our 11, 12, 13 year olds, they're only meeting our stake members once a year, <laughs> Yeah, wow. you know, our 14, 15, 16 and up, like, um, get to do youth conference and, you know, have other activities that, that we typically do for our older kids. And so I wanted them to have, um, I wanted them to have a friend. And so the, the inspiration popped into my mind that we needed to do campanions. Oh yeah. <laughs> campanions. Oh, I love it. So everything we do is so geared towards the gospel, right? Uh-huh. You know, we call our tour chart ministering opportunities. <laughs> we, I told you, we think the crap out of love everything, it. but it's really to develop that, you know, what we do ministering, we need to really engage our girls in what ministering is from a young age, you know, um, so we decided to do companions. And of course, you know, a companion is what you have on your mission. Right, They're in duos right. or trios. And so that's what we do. So the YCL director, so that is one of our YCLs who's been appointed, you know, by the Lord. Um, we, we prayerfully, and I can't even, t- it's hard to describe what that experience is like with her because some of the girls we don't know, but some of them, we gain such incredible inspiration on who to partner with each other. So because we have 13 units in our stake, um, we don't want them paired with someone in their ward okay. or unit uh-huh. or twig. I call them the small uh-huh. branches. Right. <clears throat> we also want to do a variety of ages um, so that we don't just have two 11 year olds <laughs> together yeah. who know nothing uh-huh. about camp yet, you know. But it is something that has become such an incredible tradition in our stake that they look forward to it so much. And so, um, we also gear activities. So the first night, you know, we, um, we tell them who their companion, who who their companions are, um, and pair them up. And then we have a couple of icebreaker games that they do. And then we have a campaigning activity that we do each day after that. Mm. And, um, so one of them might be that they sit with their companion during or companions, you know, during a meal. Um, another one is they have to do, you know, we ask them to do, um, a craft or make something for them. Um, and, and it is amazing. So everyone gets to know someone, especially for our very shy girls, like they get to know someone outside of who they're comfort, you know, comfortable with. Yeah. 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 And so you have certain activities that are focused on bringing those companions together. It's not that they have to 
do everything together no. throughout the whole camp. Right? Yeah, because we divide up our girls. Um, typically, we we stay by wards, you know, in our cabins, and then um, and then we do by years. You know, we mm-hmm. have them do certain activities so they can get to know girls within their age range. And then we do our campaigns and, um, it is amazing. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Uh, anything else? I, I'm, I'm yeah. intrigued by these ideas and I want to make sure we don't miss any. Of them, I know they're but... so great, right? <laughs> yes. They're awesome. Amazing. As you said, right. And I know other... it's hard not to use the word amazing all the time. I know. Um, so like I was saying, so we have our YCLs lead And, um, that has something that has been something for anyone that's feeling guilt on that. Um, it took us a while to come around on that Hmm. because of, you know, we just let a lot of the challenges of our stake just, you know, impede that. Um, and so this year we did something different. We let, we let, we invited our YCLs to help us with our workshops Hmm. and, um, And so that was something that we hadn't, we've always had them involved with the ideas of them, who we could invite. Um, but we hadn't actually involved them in doing the workshops. And so this was the first year that we did that and it was super successful. Hmm. Yeah. Cause there's always this sort of tension of, well, maybe we'll, the the adult leaders will just handle this. Right. And, but to always try and yield to the YCLs. Yes. Yeah. And so we had them do, um, one of, so we do groups, you know, we had them do, um, do it in groups. And so we had one group that did hair. And so they did hair tinsel, hair braiding, hair wrapping. Um, and, and it is such a special experience to have the young women do these things. Mm -hmm. Like we forget that as adults, sometimes I'm, you know, I'm guilty of that, forgetting that, that instead of bringing in an expert, um, to do this, it might be better for our young women to see someone more approachable with them and someone who is struggling, you know, up there to remember how to do this or is an expert at a young age Yeah, <laughs> and is really showing these girls and teaching them We had another sewing group, um, who did many styles of sewing. Um, and that led us into our, we always do a service project. It was something I brought when I didn't have a young woman calling. I brought that years ago and we just maintain that, which has been amazing. So we've done days for girls out, you know, at our camp, we've done, um, tie blankets for the Linus project. We've done, um, oh man, uh, this year we decided to do flannel hats. Um, and we did them for, we we're originally doing them for you for the Ukraine, Mm -hmm. Um, but because our camp was, um, the project we were doing was so late in the year, um, they actually are are requesting different supplies now. Mm. And so more medical and more, you know, expensive (laughs) supplies. Um, so, you know, as the Lord would have it, he, uh, he is such a, a great, um, he just knows how to do things and how then to to do open another window, right? Mm-hmm. And so we had a couple of schools in this area, lower socioeconomic schools who were doing a big clothing drive oh, cool. and school supply drive. So we got to do those for them, um, which we had some of the YCLs then volunteer at the drive and to keep camp going, you know, which is one of the, the things that our leadership really wants us to do is how yeah. do you keep camp going throughout the year yeah, um, and not just concept. have this be amazing week, you know, yeah. and then that's it. Yeah. Um, and so the, some of those things are the friendship, you know, that the girls develop and, and we really encourage them to, to trade Snapchat, you know, whatever you need to do, Facebook, you know, texting, whatever, like get the people's contact yeah. from camps so yeah, that you can, going. yeah, you can stay in contact and oh, maintain great. that friendship. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anything else? Any oh other proprietary goodness. secret that you want to share with the world? <laughs> I can't share all my secrets. That's though. right. Hey, you, that, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. So, um, you, you mentioned to, to sort of reflect back on your life. You mentioned there was a time that you were outside of the church. Yeah. You were raised in the church. Yes. And then was it early twenties or yeah. what, what's the, the, the story time frame that? where most people, you know, where we have the highest population yeah. of members leave and that's, you know, in that late teen, mm-hmm. you know, that YSA, <laughs> yeah. that young single adult 
you know, age range. And it was interesting, you know, I had a series of things just happen in my life and choices I made. Um, and I just found myself at one point with one foot in the gospel and one foot out. And, and that draw to leave the church and to live a different life, um, was just really, it was too much, yeah. you know, it was yeah. too enticing. And, um, I spent about eight years outside of the gospel and outside the church. I did, you know, I really, thankfully I had the foresight to really look at other religions and faiths. Mm -hmm. Um, but everything led me back to, really? to where we are. Yeah. And, um, but I'm grateful for that knowledge and understanding and education. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like the prodigal son, I'm the prodigal daughter that came back to what she knew. And, um, yeah. and what a, what a cool time frame it was when I was able to go home and to go through the temple with my family and, um, and for them to, to be in that experience as well. Um, yeah. was, uh, it's an incredible, incredible and special one for my family. Nice. And yeah. I bet every year those girls are grateful you came back, you know, now they you better bust be, their right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Love it. Love it. <laughs> well, I got one more question for you, but any yes. other concept or principle that you want to make sure we cover before we wrap up oh, or do man. we do a good job? We did great. Yeah. I was trying to think, you know, if we look at the faith, you know, the uh -huh. friendship and fun, um, one of those things that, that we did differently in our stake because we go to the same camp every year. Hmm. Um, we, I mean, we've been going to camp Susan and Anago, Wisconsin for over 20 years. I don't even know how much longer than that. I just know at least 20 years. Wow. Um, it is a perfect camp for, um, for our size and, you know, no one's coming through there. It's not like a state park. Um, it's very secluded and, um, has a water feature has, you know, ample, ample room for everybody. And so our state did a high adventure, um, for our young women who are 16 and above and started doing that each year. Um, because some of the things we couldn't provide them, we couldn't provide them with more, you know, adventurous things because of the limitations of our camp and the limitations of the proximity of our camp, you know, to, to now have lots of people driving to other places, you know, to do that was, um, a big expense and, um, mm -hmm. just wasn't worth it. And, um, and so that's been a little, you know, that's been a balance that we've had to do that some of our girls want, they want things that the boys have done. They want things that, you know, that other camps provide. They want, you know, they want more than fun. They want adventure and safe adventure. And, um, so that is something that, that our stake has done really well in the past was created another opportunity, um, for our young women to then experience something that didn't take away from the camp experience, but then could also be something separate. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, last question I have for you is as yeah. you reflect back on these years of leading in, in some fashion with, with girls camp, uh, how has being a leader helped you become a better follower of Jesus Christ? Ooh, I feel like my, my career path has led me to work in the trenches of the atonement as a therapist and, um, and counselor. And when I, when I work with our youth, how do you not see them in the way that, that our savior has experienced us, you know, because he suffered for us in the garden of Gethsemane, um, you know, he experienced everything that we've experienced, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And now he goes through it with us again. He's already gone through it, you know, for us and then now goes through it with us. And, and I think of our young women and I, I, I think of the potential that they have. I see them for more than the struggles. I see them for more than the, the piercings and the, you know, crazy hair colors and, um, the limitations of what their circumstances have provided no fault of their own. Um, and that love that our father in heaven who created us and who knows us more than anyone, um, it is a beautiful thing to see the individual worth of someone. You know, we, we've had those values in the past. Um, the values aren't gone. The focus is just upgraded in our, you know, in the young women programs. And 
And I see the opportunity for us to continue to see and then to love those around us as God and our brother see and love. Right? Isn't that the isn't that what we're yeah. supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, isn't that the idea is that we can shake off some of the the temporal things to really see some someone for who they truly are. But my favorite saying is, you know, <laughs> come as you are, but don't plan to stay that way because mm-hmm. <laughs> we're going to develop you and we're going to, you know, add joy and light and love to your life. Um, and I think that's being a great disciple. That's what Christ did. That's what he did on this earth. Maybe not as much fun, um, but what a great opportunity that some of us get to do the fun too. And that concludes this How I Lead interview. I hope you enjoyed it. And I would ask you, could you take a minute and drop this link in an email on social media, in a text, wherever it makes the most sense and share it with somebody who could relate to this, this experience. And this is how we, how we develop as leaders, just hearing what the other guy's doing, trying some things out, testing, adjusting for your area. And that's where great leadership's discovered, right? So we would love to have you uh, share this with uh, somebody in this calling or a related calling, and that would be great. And also, if you know somebody, any type of leader, who would be a fantastic guest on the How I Lead segment, uh, reach out to us. Go to leadingsaints.org slash contact. Maybe send this in individual an email, letting them know that you're going to be suggesting their name for this interview. We'll reach out to them. And... Uh, see if we can line them up. So again, go to leadingsaints.org slash contact, and there you can submit all the information and let us know. And maybe they will be on a future How I Lead segment on the Leading Saints podcast. And remember, go to leadingsaints.org slash 14 to access our full Young Saints virtual library. It came as a result of the position of leadership which was imposed upon us by the God of heaven who brought forth a restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when the declaration was made concerning the own and only true and living church upon the face of the earth, we were immediately put in a position of loneliness. The loneliness of leadership from which we cannot shrink nor run away, and to which we must face up with boldness and courage and ability.